Hi, everybody. Welcome to tonight's program. Thank you for joining us. Uh, tonight is Sheer 181 with Coach Menachem Bernfeld. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful uh, Pesach Sunday night. Uh, first of all, thank you to all our uh, listeners every week for uh, posting it on their statuses, emailing people about it, and uh, letting people know about it. It's a place where we have a Sikh Saber and we talk through important topics in Yanam. And we uh, really get through some clarity. And now it's Erev Pesach. There's a lot to talk about. A lot of things happening in the world. And uh, Baruch Shem, we brought Rabbi Goldwasser back. He was unbelievable. Uh, again, if anybody wants to join our WhatsApp chat, just uh, WhatsApp me at 732-314-1710. 732-314-1710. And then I'll send you the community chat link. I'll put it in the, in the link here as well. When Menachem sends out the emails, you could also sign up over there. So every Sunday you can get the flyer of the speaker and the links and where to join and the replays. If anybody's watching this on YouTube, you could uh, click on the like button, the subscribe button. So every week when Menachem uploads the videos, you could watch them, enjoy them, and grow from them. Special thank you to advertising sponsors, Lakewood Scoop here in uh, Lakewood and LA Nariel for Five Town Central. And again, for everybody to get the first time, every Sunday at 930, we have the Zoom ID, different shirim, different topics. And Metz Hashem, next week we're going to have an amazing program. It's going to be the last program before Pesach, because Pesach next week is Monday night. So Sunday night's going to be Dikas Hamas. We're not going to do a share. So next week, April 14th, is going to be the, the last program before Pesach. Please join us. We're going to have a surprise speaker. Big, big surprise speaker. And Ahmed, such a big surprise. We don't even know ourselves who it is. That's how big it surprises. <laughs> so uh, please join us. But Ms. Shem, let's see how the Shemaya is going to be the right person, the right Shliach. And we're going to start off tonight's share 181. We're talking about stuff in the end of the Pesach. So we're going to start off with the Gematria, Rabbi Goldwasser, for 181. You ready for the Gematria? I'm ready. Rabbi Arnei Yamoid. Sheer number 181. Tapping into the essence and meaning of Pesach preparation with ease. In preparing for Pesach, many people get overwhelmed, which may cause stress and anxiety, and wondering how they can get through this preparation. We must all take a deep breath and realize that Hashem is with us and with each and every one of us. And we can get through this with ease, which leads us up for tonight's Gematria 181. Hashem, Yia Hashem Imach. Hashem will be with you. Very nice. Shkoyach for that Gematria. We'll see if it stims at the end. But so far, it seems good. We're going to turn it over to Coach Menachem Bernfeld to give an opening statement over here. Tell us what are we doing here tonight? Why are we here? Why are we gathered here tonight on this busy Sunday? What's what's the tachos, Menachem? Yeah, welcome everyone. I want to welcome Rabbi Goldwasser back. Baruch Hashem. We have this fuss. Um, we're sitting here in a unique, a unique place. Uh, two weeks to Pesach. Uh, Rish Chodesh is coming up, starting uh, a new year. Rish Chodesh Nisan. We're still in Chodesh Adar, and we're getting ready for Chodesh Nisan. And uh, Benisan Asid and Goel, we're hoping. That's in, this Nissan is going to be the year that we're going to be go out of Golos, like we went out of Mitzrayim. And there's a lot going on, especially those who are into tomorrow with the eclipse, trying to understand uh, what's behind it. We, you, th there's a lot going on. You can you can feel it. You can feel it in the air. You can smell it. You look at the trees. You see his chachos. We learn from the Levana is Hachas. Every month, you know, it goes in and out. It starts new and fresh. And especially now, in the beginning of the year, in the Nissan, it's a time where we do clean out the house, you know, open the windows, let the fresh air in. And uh, it, it does have some cement for the Pneumius, what we're working on. And on the other hand, because of the change and because there's so much going on, there could be stress, there could be overwhelm, preparations, there's a lot going on, especially when it comes to the Seder. Everybody has their way they grew up with Seder, some, everybody different. Just speak to people, you won't get the same, everybody has a different way. They, the parents talking about Ben Azmanim and uh, getting together, you know, people want to do it my way, this way, you have to work it out with your spouse, with your kids, not everybody's interested. There's a lot going on. And especially when you're talking about Seder, Seder, it means 
you know, you can't just do it. You have to have a Seder. And that's why we follow the Agada. Uh, an interesting thing I, I think about going out of Mitzrayim and every year Pesach, we we get back that cheres that we're looking for to go out of Mitzrayim. So we're told to put on a white kittle and to use red wine. And everyone knows, you know, the, uh, all the preparation that we put in, it gets a little bit tricky. The beautiful kittle just came out of the cleaners and the wine. And before you know it, it what kind of cheres is it? You get upset and it spills and this and that. But it's really what we're looking for, the khair is to say, it doesn't really bother me. That's not who I am. This, you know, I'm much deeper than that. You can have a white kittel, it gets all purple, and it's amazing. Today they're selling pur purple kittlech for those people who it's too hard, but just the idea. So, Baruch Hashem, we have this chus, have with us Rabbi Goldwasser, which we're going to discuss a little bit, you know, help us out, how to connect to the deeper meaning understand a little bit the Pesach, the Haggadah, and what's going on in the world. How, where, am, where am I, every individual, how are we supposed to take, you know, my Avoida in these days and bring Mashiach closer, Mitzvah Shem. So, with a lot of Siyat and Shmaya, here we are. Shkoyach. Shkoyach, for opening it up. Appreciate it. So tonight's share is topic, finding spiritual serenity this Pesach, tapping into the essence of meaning of Pesach, and also preparation with ease. Yeah, the schos of Rabbi, Rabbi, Rabbi David Goldwasser again. Rabbi David Goldwasser is the rabbi of Kal B'nai Yitzhak in Brooklyn, New York. He's a prominent Torah personality, syndicated com columnist, daily radio commentator, and acclaimed speaker known for his excellent ability to captivate and inspire audiences worldwide. His lectures are accessed around the globe by thousands yes. through many different websites. And the most famous one, Coach Menachem, of course, Yitzhak, so Rabbi Goldwasser, the floor is yours. Now we go last week. Can you hear me? No. Okay. So I'm not going to take it over. Well, our next show will take a deep breath. So Hi, we're going last week. Ready? <laughs> we're here. We're here. Okay. Yes. The well, floor is yours, Robert Goldwasser. <laughs> The truth is, it's a tremendous schus for me to be together with everyone. Uh, Yedid Nafshi, Rebosher, and uh, Coach Menachem, all the staff. I cannot tell you the schus godel it is for me because in my idea, you are making such an impact on the Jewish world. From the very beginning of your program, the issues that you bring to the fore and that which you are willing to address within the community shows that you are sensitive to each and every member of the Jewish community. To me, there is nothing greater. You are the Jewish world. And in fact, we started with the gematria of 181. Olam Yehudi. Jewish world. You are the Jewish world. And for that, I'm indebted to you. I cannot tell you within the past couple of days how many people stopped me in shul, on the street, in the shir. Hey, we read about it. You're going to be on. We just saw it. Are you going to do this? You're going to talk about that. The people that get so excited and it is so widespread and the people that listen afterwards and then uh, contact me about one point or another. The impact that you have is major. I just want to give you a berchus hedyut, a very simple bracha. Continue mechayel el choyel mitoch achava. You should have everything that you need, all the resources that you need, and the program should continue reaching out to bring Klal Yisrael closer, laviem shabbat shamayim to Hashem. I want to start uh, by saying that uh, all of the Gedoli Musar say, everybody knows, Maschil, Bignai, we, be, we begin the Haggadah, unfortunately, Michila Oivdeh Our uh, forefathers were Oivdeh they served idols. So 
we were in a low position. Uh, we read about it in the very beginning. And the Gedolim Musa say, why? So they say the answer is, is because you take a look at it, Messiah Bishvach, when we end up, we're all good. When we end up, we have been elevated. We're not Ovdeavadazara, we're not serving idols, we're not in a bad place anymore, but we're all Besimcha. We've all raised ourselves. And I feel that Klai Yisrael, especially during this time, will take the Haggadah, especially this year on Pesach, and it will have the biggest meaning that it has ever had over all the generations, because we have never lived through a Tkufa in modern day man, where there is a war going on in the Holy Land in Eretz Yisrael, and there are Hatufim, the hostages, they should be brought back, take up from Yad, Hashem Yisbarach will be Merachem on Klal Yisrael. We never had a situation that faces us exactly like this. So I feel that we'll feel the Shibud. I feel that when we start to read Avisenu, that we are in Mitzrayim, I think that we'll begin to understand that right now we are not free people. L'shona haba b'nei charin, l'shona haba b'arad Yisrael. Next year, hopefully, we're going to be, everything will be good and we'll have the geula and everybody will, will be freed. Hopefully it's going to happen before this Pesach. But I do feel that is so relatable to all of us. It is also a chizuk to us. We read in the Vihisha Amda, HaKadosh Baruch Hu Matzileinu Meyodam. Hashem saved us from their hands. The great Piyasatzna, the uh, great Sadik, the Eish Kodesh, asked the question, why does it say HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that Hashem saved us Miyadam from their hands? Should just say that Hashem saved us. That's good enough. That Hashem redeemed us. The Piyasasa says a answer, which I think is the greatest chizuk in the world for you and for I. For me, anyhow, I'll share it with you. He says, up until the time that we are delivered into the enemy, we still have hope. I still think that I'm going to be able to free myself of these people. And I got a lot of chizuk, I'm encouraged. However, once I'm in the hands of the enemies, once the hostages were delivered there in Gaza and were stolen and kidnapped, pirated away from Klal Yisrael, they're already in their hands. How are we going to get them out? Rishayim, evil people like that that don't even want to negotiate or make some ridiculous uh, type of a, a negotiation. HaKadosh Baruch Hu Matzileinu Mi Adam. Hashem will take us out of their evil hands. Hashem will take all the hostages and bring them back home. It is chizuk for all of us. HaKadosh Baruch Hu Matzileinu Mi Adam. Sometimes a person falls into Yehush. They fall into despair. They fall into chas shalom poverty. They fall into a lack of shalom bias. Milchama goes on in the house itself. Forget about Eretz Yisrael. In the house, there's a milchama. A person's miyayish. Oh, you know, my wife, forget about it. My husband, no way. My son, my daughter, they're gone. They're not going to come back. What is the, what's the hope that I have? HaKadosh Baruch Hu Matzileinu Mi Adam. Says the Helege Piyasatzna, don't worry about it. Even you've already fallen to that hand, even though you already gave up, even though you already think it's hopeless. My yod filosi, what's my davening going to help anymore? HaKadosh Baruch Hu Matzileinu Mi Adam. Hashem will help bring us out from their hands. And I think that's the beauty um, of the Haggadah. I think it's a beauty of, of Pesach, even though a guy was telling me uh, an interesting thing. A guy was telling me that uh, his wife told him, unless he's going to do half the work in the house, she cannot make Pesach. <laughs> He came, he says, her gezerah was worse than Paro's gezerah. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? He says, Ani lo misugal. I'm not cut out to do that kind of cleaning and housework and preparing and that. This is for the woman. This is for the... I said, my friend, I think she was very nice to you. She said, you only have to do half. She could have said, do it all. But she's sharing with you. Half and half. 
it is a schus gadol to work and to be involved in the preparations for Pesach. Says the Ariya Kadosh, Rabbi Yitzhak Gloria, when we will help to clean, when we will get even perspire because we are overheated and we've been working, cleaning the oven, the sink, the refrigerator, all the pots and pans and being toivo, whatever we need. When a person does this, when they work up a sweat, says the Ariya Kadosh, it is a kapara for kama averos. For many, many sins, a person just got cleaned. They are tahar, they are kadosh, they're holy, they're pure. So the next time that your wife or your husband or whoever says, you know, clean up, next year I'm going to go to hotel, Hawaii, I'm not going to stay around here in New York anymore, New Jersey, <laughs> you got to be nuts. No, no, that if you go to the hotel, you got a lot of miles. I'll never say no. On the other hand, you're missing out how beautiful it is, how zis it is that we can do the work, that Hashem gave us the hands, the strength, the feet, that Hashem gave us all that we need to be able to prepare for the Yom Tov. That alone is a great sluice. Even you go into the Seder, even you sit down by that Seder and you're so tired, you're washed and you fall asleep. After Kiddush, you just sit there, right? <laughs> they got to wake you up several times. Even that is a mila. Even that, you will be paid very richly from Hashem. You know, Coach Menachem is so beautiful to hear uh, what he has to say. And he talked, uh, and I listen closely always. He said about the white kittle that we wear, and all of us wear a white kittle. Uh, I know there was one family broke out, Sholem Bayes, Rebosh, you're not going to believe this. Uh, before the Seder started, <laughs> they had to find the kittel because somebody took it last, the Yom Kippur, to the cleaner to get it ready so it would be nice and white. And the husband said, where's the kittel? We can't start the, without the kittel. The wife said, I don't know. I thought you brought it back from the cleaner. He said, what do you mean I brought it back? I put it in the closet. They're looking for a half an hour. In the meantime, Machlekes broke out <laughs> before the Seder started over the white kittel, which is a minig. So a beautiful idea, the great Stalin of Hasidim. The great Stalin of Hasidim. It's unbelievable. How they fear a Seder is unbelievable. I, I, must, I want to tell you just a, an incident, Agav. Uh, one time, I had to go very early. Very, very early. I went with Rav Prager, Zechot Tzadik Livracha, to the country. And he said, we have to stop. We went early in the morning. We have to stop to Davin Chakras. I didn't know where he was stopping. He stopped to Davin in the country, in the Catskills, by the Stalin of Hasidim. I was so tired. By we got by the time we got there, I put on the tefillin. And all of a sudden, uh, I was, between me and you, I was resting a little bit. Came to be Baruch Sha'amar. Baruch Sha'amar Behayah Stalin of Hasidim daven bekoil. They daven loud. I want you to know, I woke up. I don't think I slept for a day after that. The Hisoiris for davening. Stalin and Hasidim have a very interesting minig. When they go to the Seder, so they get usually, I don't know, sometimes a wine stain, sometimes a little of the charoises, sometimes there's a little bit of the food, and it gets stained. We eat in the kittel, we, we do the whole Seder in the kittel. Fascinating. They will not clean it for Yom Kippur because they hold that you come in with the leftovers, with the remnants of the Seder, the Seder that was done with such great holiness, you take that into the Yom Adin and you say, Hashem, how careful I am to do every mitzvah, the maror, the yayin, the charoises, look at Hashem, look how careful I am, I want Dafka to have it on there, so you see that I am a kind of mitzvah with great Ava. It's an unbelievable thing. It is, is, is so special. That is the schus that we have, that we go into Pesach. That is the schus that we have, that you and I 
are able to begin to understand the beautiful avoda of every single word of every single page. The children as well. Uh, we have a, a strange minig. The strange minig is that in some homes, aside from the fact that the child asks the manishtano and that the parents should most definitely give time to the children. Uh, I was asked a Shaila, uh, Erev Shabbos, actually Leo Shabbos after Shul, one of the Balabatim came over to me and he said, uh, I have a minig. The first day, I say the Haggadah, and the children don't interrupt. The second day, the children say the Haggadah, and I add. However, some of the children said that they're not so happy with that arrangement. Yelamdenu Rabbeinu, what do you think? I said, well, why did they say they're not so happy with it? So he says, because they would like to speak the first night as well. I said, I tell you the truth. I understand you but I believe that the children have a very valid point. The whole evening is the Agata to Levincha. Tell your child, tell your son, tell your daughter, let her steig, let him steig, let him ask what you want, let him say his divrei Torah, let him ask his kashas. That's what the whole Seder is about. Not more than that. The Agata to Levincha. It's more than anything. Sipur Yitzias Mitzrayim. You relate to the children. The Chassam Soifer says it is the transmission of the Masorah. Father to son, mother to daughter, grandma, grandpa, Zayd, the Baba, whoever it is. They're given over the, the Torah to their children and their grandchildren. He says that's the whole Seder. So I feel that it is extremely important that the children are involved. Uh, I'm going to say I don't want to I don't want to make a plug for anything in particular, but I got to mention it. I took a little guy to the farm store today to uh, uh, Judaica, and I said, "Pick out whichever haggadah you want, whatever haggadah, it's whatever you like. Every every haggadah is beautiful for me." He went. He went. He was fascinated. There was a haggadah out of Lego. Uh, not out, made out of Lego, but Lego pieces in the Haggadah. I said, you like this one? He says, this is the most beautiful. I said, this is the Haggadah that I'm going to get. I got him the Lego Haggadah. I want you to know, he took it the whole way home. He wouldn't let it out of his hand. When we got home, he put the, on his little stand, he put the Haggadah he looked at it, he's fascinated. The children, it is their Yom Tov. It is for them. We encourage them. We understand that it's all about the kids. It's all about the kids. It's awakening in them for an entire year, a beautiful Hisoiris that they'll always remember the Seder. If you ask me, what did I remember from the Seder? I want to show you. I have the Haggadah that my parents brought me when I was a little boy. I remember it, I use it every year. Why? Not so much that it's the, <laughs> Hashem help me, I got a lot of Haggadahs over the years, a lot, a lot. But the Haggadah that I love to use is that one that my parents bought me. I'll show it to you uh, in just a moment. So the fascinating idea is that we gotta know it's for the kids, it's for each other. It's for my husband, my wife. They asked the great Rav Steinman, Rav Steinman, what was the best Seder that he ever had? God will be Yisrael. The Gedol Yisrael Shemi Piyamonu Chaim, we live from their words. What did the Godel say was his best Seder? He said there was one Seder. And the whole family was away. The only one that came to the great Rav Steinman Seder was the Rebetzin. He was able to take the time to explain to the Rebetzin each and every part of the Haggadah. Rav Steinman said, that was my greatest time. The time that I had to explain to my wife all of the Haggadah, and we were able to speak back and forth. That's a God will be Israel. He wasn't the Falpo and Abnei Nasser. He didn't speak over a Rajma and a Shver Rambam. What did he do? He explained beautifully 
the Seder to his wife. Fascinating. The name of the Sefer of the great Rav Steinman is, as everybody knows, Ayeles HaShachar. Ayeles HaShachar. Why? Because his wife's name was Ayelet. And out of honor to her, he called the Sefer Ayeles HaShachar. That is the, uh, the beauty of the Seder that is family-based. Or if a person is by themselves and they join in a Seder, it doesn't matter where that person realizes that they become part of the family, that they are there on the nights of Pesach and they should have a Simcha because they join together. We are all one. We are all connected. The night of the Seder, there isn't any, any difference between one Yid and another Jew. And in fact, uh, fascinating, in fact, on the night of Pesach, we sing Chad Gadya. Everybody knows Chad Gadya. Some people make all the animal noises and some people make a dance for Chad Gadya. But uh, every different nigga, no matter what it is, everybody reaches that point. It's a big simcha and we love it. One time, somebody made fun of Chad Gadya. They made fun. What kind of nigga is this? Chad Gadya, an only kid. Five. The dog came, bit the person, and Malacham office came. What, what kind of a thing is that he made fun? Chida wrote a scathing tshuva, a responsa. Chas v'shalim, to make fun of anybody's minig, even if it's not your own, I will spare you the tshuva. But he wrote there a very, very stern warning and told the person what they need to do in order to do tshuva. So... A person should be careful because it's a night of great achdus. We join together, kulonu ke'echon, with everybody in the entire world. Uh, it also, uh, everybody has slightly a different perspective. Everybody has a slightly different uh, hashkafa, if you will. Everybody's joined together. It doesn't matter. We have the Arba Bonim. We have the four sons, Echad Chacham, Echad Rasha, one wise, one evil, Echad Tom, one simple, Echad Sheeno Delisho, one who doesn't know how to, uh, <laughs> doesn't know how to ask. So by each one, we say Echad, and they all sit together at the table. There's not separate sections for each one, but they're all together. And we see from that that there is an achdus, there's the echad. Rabbi Nachman of Breslov asks, why is there uh, echad? Why do we say echad chacham, echad rasha, echad tam, echad sheyeno de elisho? Why do we keep saying one? Usually you say only echad, chacham, rasha, tam, sheyeno de elisho. Rabbi Nachman of Breslov, Lekute Maran, says a fascinating answer. He says, you know what the reason is? Is because when a person says the Haggadah, they realize that Echad, all the four sons are really one. They're you and I, but at different times in life. Sometimes I want to be the Chacham. Sometimes I want to be the Shieno de Elishoel. If I ask a shaila, it might be trafit, that might not be good. Sometimes I want to be the tom. Innocence is bliss. I don't know. I didn't see it. I don't know about it. And sometimes, it could even be the other. At different stages in our life, it is a time that we have in our life that all of us, that you and I, can find our way. You and I can find our expression in the Haggadah. Even in the words, even in the words of the Russia, a person can find their meaning. Even in the response, Hake Ashinov. What do we do when the Russia goes and he challenges us in the middle of all of our agoda? Hake Ashinov. You go and you blunt his teeth. What kind of an answer is that? We know that you're patient for everybody. You never get upset with anyone. They can ask you, Hillel, in the Gemara, Mesech the Shabbos. They came to make him angry. They tried to get him. 
They he was taking a shower out of Shabbos. They brought him downstairs. They said, somebody needs you. He goes out. He thinks it's like uh, Pikuach Nefesh. And they ask him a silly question about why people's eyes are like this or why people's feet are like that. Did Hillel get upset? No. He was Meishu. He answered. So why all of a sudden, Hake Ashino, why do we blunt the guy's teeth? The Helege Koshetzer Magid, the great Sadik, said a very, very beautiful answer. The Koshetzer Magid, the Avodos Yisrael says, because the question of the Russia is the following. I can understand you go to shul. When you go to shul, I can understand that that's ruchnius, that's spirituality. When you're lighting the Hanukkah menorah, I understand that that's spirituality. When you are learning, I can understand that that is spirituality. That's all part of it. However, when you're eating and drinking, what's that have to do with Ruchnius? What kind of spiritual trip is that? The Kajas of Magid said, if you think that the only reason that you need your teeth is to eat French fries and to have um, sushi, he says, this is not the reason. Then blunt your teeth. You don't need your teeth. It's Haruchnius. It's our Avoda. The night of the Seder, we raise up all the food from the whole year, all the things, the matzahs, mechaper, all the eating. On that night of Pesach is completely different. It raises us up. We understand the Varm Shebikdusha. We take the cup of wine. And when we take the cup in our hands, we realize the Kedusha that we can have by drinking wine. We realize that we're raising it and we're going to make the bracha and we're bringing it up to a different level. It's mechaper. It's mechaper. Maybe I ate something that I shouldn't have during the year by accident. Maybe not by accident. It's mechaper. It gives us kapara. The night of the Seder does wonders for you and I. There is nothing greater than the Seder experience. It is the most special evening of the entire year. In fact, uh, the Vision Sarebbe, when he moved to Eretz Yisrael, when finally he got to Eretz Yisrael, he used to love to talk to the young people. And he said, you know, I love Israel. Because when you ask a person, how are they? They say, Hakol Seder. Everything is Beseder. He said, they don't know how right they are. Hakol Beseder. Whatever happens during the Pesach Seder is impactful for an entire year. It lifts us up. It raises us. That is what we mean, Hakol Beseder. We all have that great Tzuchus, that we are uplifted at the Seder, and it matters for the entire year, what will happen during our Pesach Seder. A person should be besimcha, should be as happy as they possibly can. A person should have kavana, whatever feeling, whatever intention a person might have, put yourselves into it. Know that the night of the Seder can make a difference for the entire year. It's an important kavana that a person has in mind. Uh, also, in order to fight, we all have challenges in life. All of us have challenges. One has maybe something, lishonos. Another person has uh, some money, difficulties, some challenges with that. Another person to tell the truth. Another individual, dominant. Whatever a person's challenge is, the night of Pesach, we work on it. Everything is pulled together. We work on every area of challenge in one night. And it is the most beautiful thing. Even I grapple back and forth in Ashkafa. I go back and forth. At the end, I say the Chad Gadya, and I can't understand it. What happened? Why was that kid? What happened to it? What happened to the cat? What happened to all of the things along the road? I don't understand. There's no seeming sense to it. I can't put it together. Why is this happen over here? And why did that happen? And what's the Re'ida Sadama? Why did the earthquake happen? And what's with the eclipse? Hashem, what's going on in the world? 
helter skelter where's the morals where's the morals in our country what's happening what's happening in the school system in the public school system so many things going on Hashem Yisbarach says there's going to be a lot of chadgadjas going on but the minig that we have is so beautiful right after we're done we say shira shirim we profess our great love to Hashem. I am so, have love to Hashem, and Hashem has such great, great love to me. We're able to put everything together. It all makes sense. It all comes together because we do our avodah. Uh, to me, one of the most beautiful nights of the year is the Seder. You savor it. Afi Komen, I was asked, I want to tell you a hundred times, uh, more than that, can you have something after the Afi Komen? Why? It's like before Kiddush. When do you want to eat something or drink something? Before Kiddush. It's the time you get the hungriest. After we finish the Afi Komen, for some reason, after the Seder, a person wants to have something. So, of course, uh, water seltzer, tea, whatever a person uh, would like, a drink or something we could have. But why is it that we have that a great uh, thirst or the hunger? I believe the following. Because the uh, idea is that the Seder leaves us off a tam, a taste. We do not want to get that taste out of our mouths. We want it to remain. Yetzer does not want it to remain. So he gets us a little bit hungry or thirsty and wants us to get rid of that taste. Our bracha is that the taste of the afikoman should be there a whole year. You save the afikoman. I put mine away on the top of the shelf. It's a shmira for the entire year. You leave the afikoman in your house. All of the things you leave a little remnant, and it helps us always to remember the entire year of the Shmira of Leil Shimurim. Uh, I'll stop for a moment uh, in case there is a question or... Yeah, there goes a lot of questions, a lot coming up. Okay, okay let's do a poll now. We're going to ask the Ilma poll, and then we're going to jump into it, okay? Here we go. Three question poll. Everybody answer to the best of your ability. First question, what do you do to get ready spiritually for Pesach? Four options. Cleaning and shopping is enough for me. I listen to Shirim. I learn. I read. Number three, I don't connect spiritually. Number four, I engage in davening into Hillman reflection. Number two, how do you manage with the stresses and overwhelm? Number one, like Rabbi Goldwasser said, I leave it over, to, I leave it to my spouse. Number two, I'm organized. I'm almost done. I'm very efficient. Number three, very hard for me every year, the same story. Number four, I practice mindfulness and relax and relaxation techniques. Third question, a little bit different. How do I tap into the holy spiritual aspects of Pesach when feeling overwhelmed with life stressors? Number one, by engaging in moments of reflection and prayer amidst the chaos. Number two, by seeking guidance from spiritual leaders and mentors. Number three, Try to focus on all the good things I have and let the stressors just be. Or number four, by connecting with supportive community members, family members who share in similar struggles. People that are going through hard things. How do you like get into that mode of Pesach when you're dealing with whether it's family, financial, medically, whatever it is? So those are the three questions. Everybody answers the best of your ability. We'll share the, the polls in a minute. Okay, five more seconds. Okay. Here's the results, Robert Goldwasser. What do you do to get ready spiritually with Pesach? 15% of the people say cleaning and shopping is enough for me. 72% of the people, they listen to shiurim, 
They read, they learn, they go to Coach Benachem. 9% of people don't connect at all spiritually to Pesach, and 4% engage in davening and Tehillim and reflection. Any comment on that, Rabbi Goldwasser? Seems like uh, people connect by... Like to, uh, I would like to briefly... Uh, one, I would say that uh, cleaning and shopping could be enough for some people. It It is... Uh, uh, quite possible. It is an avoda. It's a beautiful avoda. Uh, some may not favor that, but for others, it is bringing in the Yom Tov. It really is. Our Babas and Zaydas, uh, Safta and Saba, they did it that way. The second is I listened to Shurim. I would have to say that, of course, it's probably the most beautiful way because it prepares us, it gives us an added insight. I cannot tell you how many people came to Yom Noroim. We had a very beautiful uh, session. Uh, if you remember, it was uh, be, during, I believe, the Aser Simei Tshuva before Yom Kippur. You don't know how many people. Rarely after a program do people come over and say, oh, uh, we heard you on this program. After Coach Menachem, they came over and they said it helped them get ready for the Yom Adin. It helped them to prepare. They're a little nervous. Some people are a little bit scared. And they said that they got a tremendous amount. So I would say that shiurim or listening to something greatly helps. We are, you know, we're used to hearing a lot. We're used to media these days. And by having it or listening to an idea, it sometimes does help us because it's a voice that enters and we're able to think about it and process it. Those that don't connect spiritually, it's a difficult one. Uh, the poll came out uh, in the United States, the two experiences that people connect to, even those that are the most disenfranchised are Pesach and Hanukkah, Hanukkah lighting and Pesach. I would say even you don't connect, try on a different way. Sing the songs. Get the song. Put on Shweki. HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Put that on. Put something that you like. Anything. I don't care what it is. I'm Yisrael Chai. Get used to that. Put the Nigunim to the Seder. I have a entire uh, Lel Seder. I'd be happy to share it with anyone from Rav Binyam Przansky put out. The good and for Lel Seder. And he tells you get choices that you can use for all different parts of the Seder. Wake it up. Maybe you don't connect, but we all connect in the Gunim. It's unbelievable. I once asked many years ago as a teenager, I'll go in Ramosha Feinstein, if you could play music for people that were not yet uh, from to be Makarib during Sphere Somer. He wrote me back. I got a handwritten shuva. On it, a handwritten response. Music reaches out to everybody. Doesn't matter. Eat the matzah. Matzah's good. Whatever kind of matzah you like. Shmura matzah, machine, broyer's matzah, whatever you like. Doesn't matter. Eat the matzah. Be part of that. You can eat it. Have whatever kavana you want. Drink the wine. Everybody likes a little bit of wine. You know, Michelin talks about it. But connect in some way. Even you don't connect. Connect in any way you want. Drop into a Seder. Drop in. I had uh, a nice couple in the Seder. It was unbelievable. Uh, they came in. They stayed until Shulchan Aruch. Then after Shulchan Aruch, they thought that was the end of it. So they got their coats on. <laughs> so uh, some of the kids said, you know, we still have like half the Seder. He says, half the Seder? No, we'll wait for tomorrow night. <laughs> that was it. But it's beautiful. At least they came for half the Seder. That's unreal. They did the Mitzvah of the Seder. It's our connection. It's yours. Don't matter whether you feel it or you don't feel it. Try. Experience it. Come to the Seder. Come to my Seder. Everybody. You're invited. I don't know if we have enough for everybody, but you're certainly invited. It would be a beautiful thing. It belongs to you. Lay claim to your heritage. Do not let others grab it. It is yours. It belongs to you, that treasure. Have it.
Don't worry about it. The okay. other, I, Let's get to the next question over here. Go last, sir. Good. How do you manage with stresses and overwhelm? 8% of people say, leave it to my spouse. 23% of the people say, I'm organized. I'm almost done. They get it all done. They get out of the way. 50% of the people say, very hard every year, the same story. 50% of the people here feel that the, the stressors is just every year. It's like it's a challenge. And 20% of the people, I practice mindfulness and relaxation techniques. I think it's the, uh, a lot of the mindset. We're also nervous. We're very nervous when there is a yomtiv coming in. There's some anxiety, uh, a fast day. People will start calling well in advance. Do I have to fast? What do I do? And they get nervous. I think the same thing is in Pesach. I got to clean it. I got to buy the stuff. I got to clean it out. I don't know. I have a Shiloh. What do I got to do for the oven? I bought a new, the glass top oven. How do I clean it? It's like a whole thing. I believe that everybody should do deep, breathing exercises when it comes to Pesach. Chill out. Read a beautiful safer about Pesach. There are so many nice farm. It puts us in the mood. It relaxes us. Read some good stories. I don't, I, I don't plug my own. I don't. But I just want to tell you, I got a Haggadah that I put out, Freedom of the Soul. I'd be happy to help anybody to get it. That's uh, it's not a money making uh, endeavor, but what I did was I tried to make it a relaxing Haggadah to take out the anxiety, to put in the neimus, to put in the sweetness, the pleasantness, so that a person could have a yom tov in which they will begin to feel yom tov relax me, simchas yom tov. It's my joy on my yom tov not to worry about it, not to stress, to do things that will put ourselves at ease. According to the Svarim, I'll, I'll just say a skula, if you're ever nervous, there is a skula to feel not nervous, not anxious. And that is to think about any of the scenes of Avram Avinu. Avram with the Akeda, sacrificing of Isaac, with Achnosos Archim, Avram Avinu breaking down the idols in his father's house. You think about that and you got clear mind. Approach the Yom Tov in your own way. Make a list. Be uh, very methodical about it. This is what I have to do. I have two weeks left. First day, I'm going to clean up. The second day, I'm going to put things in order. Third day is my shopping day. The fourth day, I'm going to take care of the car. Make yourself a schedule so it's not mumble jumble. That helps. Those that have a difficulty in uh, cleaning or they're nervous or a little, I don't want to say OCD, don't get nervous. It's all going to be good. Whatever level you do is also good. It's very interesting. Chometz is oser b'mashahu. Mashahu is the least littlest bit. Usually I have kezayis, kebeya, uh, whatever. Chometz is oser b'mashahu. The great Rebbe, the Sh Reb Shmelke of Nicholsburg said, Chometz is Asr, Bimashahu, dependent on who that person is. Whatever your level is, it's all good. Hashem loves your avoda. Whatever you can bring on Pesach, even you could do a little bit, and you can't go crazy, you can't start cleaning the chandeliers, which you don't have to, it's also good. I think that would lower the anxiety level, approach it in a different way. Look at it. This is my schus. This is my beautiful time of year. I'm celebrating the spring. I am celebrating the trees. I'm making the bracha, the renewal of nature. I am celebrating the fact that geulas come every year, that on this year, shiduchim are going to come, that refuas are going to come, that yeshuas are going to come, that parnas is going to come, all the things that we want. I'm going to sing Hallel. You want a musical Hallel? <laughs> musical Hallel. Sing the musical Hallel. But let, let us try to remove some of the anxiety away. Let's take a your chamomile tea, if you want, or another schooler to remain calm. Uh, you know, whatever your thing is, have a little bit. Change. Talk it over. 
speak to a friend, call up the coach, call Rabasha. They give you unbelievable answers how to remain calm. It says, Yaschen Lachem, the Gemara says, if you're a little bit anxious or nervous, tell another person. It'll be good. You need somebody to hold your hand a little bit. You could do it. But everybody, it's yours. Lay claim to it. Don't let anybody else have it. You do it yourself. Can I, you, do I have a minute on this? Yeah, sure. We'll go to the next question after the answer. Okay. I just want to say, uh, I had the schus, the great Reb Chaim Kamenetsky, Sechet Tzadik Livrocha, Ish Kaddosh. He once had me for Pesach. It was in the ski uh, in uh, Whistler. <laughs> One time I went, I, he asked me, it was very important to him. So I came. There they have a breakfast. How many times do you eat breakfast on an Arab Pesach? Not usual. You take a bagel on the run and you're outside somewhere and you take the you know, I had a breakfast in the hotel. Mamish can eat in a tachton. I'm ready. A guy comes over in the ski suit, zipped up, ready with the skis, ready, everything to hold it. And he says, Rov, uh, can I ask you a shaila? I thought to myself, oh, it's a shaila for me. It's unbelievable. I stood up. I went over the corner. I thought it must be a, a private shaila. He says, no, no, you don't have to get up. I was wondering if you would mind when they're going to burn the chametz, could you burn my chametz together with yours? He gives to me the bag. And he runs away. I thought to myself, Ravid, what, you want me to say the kol chamir, shabim avato your chametz? Uh, you want me to drink the wine tonight for you? What can I do? It's yours. It's yours. It's precious. Take a hold of it. Maybe there's anxiety. But it's a beauty in a person laying claim to the mitzvahs that enhance their life. Beautiful. Okay, very important question. How do I tap into the holy spiritual aspects of Pesach when feeling overwhelmed with life stressors? People that are going through very difficult things in their life, whatever it is, how do they tap into Pesach? So 22% of the people say by engaging in moments of reflection and prayer amidst chaos. 11% of the people say by seeking guidance from spiritual leaders or mentors. 54% of the people say trying to focus on all the good things that I have and let the stressors just be. 13% of the people by connecting with supportive community members who share similar struggles. I feel they're all very beautiful answers and... Uh... It's interesting the 54 came out uh, on that. It definitely does help to uh, gain guidance. A uh, guidance from someone you feel has a good Torah perspective, a healthy uh, outlook in general on life. I feel within the Haggadah, we can find the spiritual chizuk that will help us get away from some of the stressors. A person can take a break from worrying. A person can take a break from the everyday worries that they have. Every day I'm worrying about, I'm looking for a shirach, I'm panosam. Every day I'm trying for refuah. Every day I'm worried about the shalom bias in the house. I'm worried about the children. One night, a person can take a break from the worries and find their expression within the Seder itself. Rav Hudner said something, the great Rosh Hashiva of Chaim Berlin, Rav Hunder said something that is amazing. He said, you know, we eat the maror. We have the maror. He says, when you make the bracha on the maror, it's making a bracha on all the bad experiences, on all the challenges, on all the anxiety of the past year. Allah chilas maror, and that is it. And we look forward to the year ahead with only good. He says, that's the kavana by the mara. So bring your anxiety, bring your worry, bring it to the Pesach Seder. Let it dissipate, at least for one night a year. Feel good. Say, Hashem, I'm going through a lot. Hashem, help me. I'm here at Seder. I'm dedicating my night to you. I'm doing everything. It's not an easy avoda. Drinking the wine, some people, it's difficult. Eating the matzah, some people, it's difficult. 
the Mara, some people it's difficult. Some people to say the Haggadah is difficult. Some individuals to sit around the table with their own family is difficult. But Hashem, I'm doing it for you. I'm doing everything here for you. Help me out. Help me that this year things should be different. Help me that I should make Seder out of my life. I do feel that the Seder itself is therapeutic. You sit together with people. There's an exchange of ideas. There's an exchange of feelings. I think that it is the greatest, you should excuse me for saying it, group therapy in the entire world. There's a lot of love the night of the Seder. I never forget, I was a, a young uh, teenager and they invited to the house somebody. He sat next to me, an older man, and he started telling me something. <laughs> I thought the guy said, I got to tell you the truth. I, you know, young, feisty uh, teenager. So I started to uh, challenge him back and forth. He quoted National Geographic. I forgot the exact quote, but it was something about uh, you'd see us with tribe. So I said, We Jews do not get our Torah from the National Geographic. And everybody burst out laughing. Here's a young guy in saying that. But it's beautiful because there is an exchange. There is a value of sitting together and being able to lift ourselves up, being able to understand that one night a year, I can, two nights a year, I can forget it. Two nights a year, I want to dream. I want to think about the base of Mikdosh, Adarhu, Yivne Beso Bekarov. I want to dream ahead, Bisham Nacho. Over there we will eat from the Korbanos. All the things that we dream of, we say, all the greatness of the Geula, of the redemption. It's a futuristic Yom Tov. We're dreaming ahead. You go. You open the door. When do you open the door the whole year for Elio Anovi? It's a beauty. You get to see Elio Anovi. I don't know if you see him actually, or you know that he's there. You know that he came into your house with certainty. I don't know. But I do know one thing. You do open the door for Elio Anovi. The Michtam Elio, the great Rav Dessler said, the Amuna Shalema that a person has when they open the door for Elio Anovi is amazing. You bring Elio Anovi into your life by opening the door. It's an amazing thing. So there is a tremendous amount of Amuna of different things that we practically do of exercises during the Seder that have a lot to do in our very, very, it's an impact for us on our year. And I think it's a, it's just a beautiful idea that we are able to uh, have a night where we know Elio Novi comes in. The Kotzker uh, had a lot of Hasidim that wanted to come to his house for the night of the Seder. They all wanted to see Elio Novi. So they were waiting and waiting and waiting. Finally, the Kotzker gets up opens the door for Elio Anovi, and the Chassidim, they don't see no one come in. They continue the Seder, and all the Chassidim, they were downcast. You could see it in their face. Elio Anovi, they, they were waiting to see, and they didn't. The Kotzka said, why, are you, why is everybody down? What's the gloom and doom here? Why, why are you upset? So they said, Rebbe, we thought when you opened the door, we're going to be zoichet to say, Elio Novi, come into the house. He says, you think Elio Novi comes in through the door? He comes in through your heart. He comes in through your brain. A person that gears themselves up for the night, believe me, you can see and you can sense Elio Novi. You don't have to be like the kids. They come over to see if there's any of the wine missing from the kosher Leo. You don't have to worry. Guaranteed, you're opening the door for Leo Novi. He's coming to your house. I can tell you the truth. I wait the whole year just to open the door. Leo Novi should come in. What a bracha. What a bracha. Good time to the daven. All your bakashas. There's a there's the question that somebody sent in, very blunt, straightforward question. 
why was it created this way to be so stressful to, to get to the Yamtas? It's a difficult question. A lot of things, when it's difficult, has a bigger, bigger tum to it, has a greater taste. The stress in itself, I got to deal with. It's hard. I'm sure when Avram Avinu went to that Kedis Yitzchak, it was stressful. Why Hashem had to ask Avram Avinu and Evan Avraham, the servant of Hashem, Ki Avram Avinu, that was the Mrosh Kolam the head of all the believers, why do he have to go and take those steps and all the things that he had to carry? That Yitzchuk is asking him, Tati, Abba, Dad, tell me. I see the Aish, I see the fire, I see the Eitzim, I see the wood. Where, where, where is the animal? Tati, I don't see him. And Avram Avinu is walking together with him. And he can't give him the answer because he knows in the back of his mind he's going to ask him to go on the Mizbech and he's going to tie the ropes so that Yitzchuk doesn't flinch. It's hard. Yiddishkeit, I got to make a hakrava. I got to make sacrifices. To the questioner, I want you to know I connect with you. It's not easy. You think it's easy for me? You think there are things in, in the Avodah Sakodesh are easy for me? You want me to tell you the truth or I should tell you fairy tales? It's just as hard. However, I realize Hashem gave it to me, so I get great schar. The pum tsaira agra, according to my pain, is going to be my gain. We have a difficult time. One boy came to me. What a boy! He said to me in Yiddish from one of the beautiful yeshivas in Borough Park, Chsidish Yeshiva. He says, Chesteinish the Gemara. I can't understand the Gemara. I got a friend. He gets it right away. He knows it. He knows it by pay, knows it by heart. To me, it comes difficult. I got a tutor. And then afterwards, I have to go over it, and it's difficult. I took this little boy's hand, and I said, I want to shake your hand. Because to you, you're getting 10 times the scar that your friend is, because it's coming more difficult to you. I can only tell you that there were great tzaddikim that had very difficult times when they were learning. They couldn't even learn the olive base right, but they continued, they persevered, and then they became Gedoli Yisrael. That's what is going to happen to you, this boy I told him. You're working, you're putting yourself into it. Lepum tsaira agra, according to your pain, to your challenge, is going to be a great reward. Sometimes we don't know the reason for it. We don't know why Hashem, why do you make it this hard? That answer will get Achri Sayyamim. The Eish Kodesh said that in the beginning of the Torah, it says, Preshis Bara Elohim. Elohim, God created the earth. Elohim Mida Sadin, the Mida, the divine attribute of strict justice. I don't know why, Hashem. Why did it have to be difficult? Why is it a Sadin now? The end of the entire Torah, last words, Le'ene kol Yisrael, open to the eyes of all of Israel. Why? Because Hashem says at the end, we will understand why we had to go through everything, each and every obstacle, every bump in the road, every time that there was a stormy night, Hashem is going to help us to understand why we had to go through. But the Piyasatsna said, Hashem, let me see it in the beginning. The beginnings and the ends are tied together. Elohim Sadin, divine attributes, strict justice. Let me know what it's about now. I need to know. It's hard for me to have to go through these things. We're mispalo. It should be easy for all of us. Achenu kubes Yisrael, anasunim batzor v'shivya. Anybody who's doing difficult times. Why is it that that song of that great high Gavra Rabbah 
A.B. Rottenberg, why did it go throughout the entire world, reverberating every yid, every background, no matter where, no matter which occasion? Why? Because it expresses just this question, and it gives expression that we ask Hashem, it should be different, that these challenges should be removed, that finally we should see the light, that finally we should be redeemed, that everybody, no matter which not good situation they're in, that they'll be let out. Amen. Somebody wants to see that God that you were talking about, and then we're going to go to a live question. I have uh, the the freedom of the soul, Haggadah, or the ch or the child's Haggadah. Let's see the child's Haggadah. One moment, just one second. Is it the Maxwell? Maxwell House Coffee? This is the Haggadah. Haggadah Shal Pesach, my parents bought. Inside, uh, there are a few pictures, which was a very big chiddush. Actually, you know, today you can get a fully pictorial Haggadah. But in these days, I don't know if you could see it, there are some beautiful Haggadah, beautiful pictures that were great. And to me, uh, the fact that my parents bought me and I had my own Haggadah, it was so special. It's been bound since then. And I will even show you, I wrote down the shiurim. Uh, the writing is atrocious. The handwriting is atrocious. It's gotten better since then, so uh, don't hold me accountable. I'll show you when I wrote the shiurim as a little boy. Oh, that's so cute. So hey. this I, the, I saved by me. I remember, I remember my parents gave me over an oil and mole, a whole world. I remember as a boy with the freshness and the excitement of sitting at that, I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait to say the Manashtana. I couldn't wait to sing together with everybody. So it helps to bring back all the- sure When that boy becomes a big boy, he's gonna be holding his Lego got it like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay, I, let's, let's to, I like that Hagoda. I liked it. Let's go to the first live question. Okay, you're on. Um, hello, Rob. Thank you so much for your uh, time um, with us tonight. Um, I was hoping that you know, as we're preparing for this this holiday, and there's a lot of focus, of course, on a, on a night that's about teaching the children and all the aspects of that and including the children. Um, I'm hoping that Rav can offer some insight and chizuk for those of us who do not have children, um, that even among the beauty of the holiday, it can be very difficult. One of the greatest mitzvahs of the Seder is the fact of Sipur Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, the fact of telling over the uh, whole idea that we came out of Mitzrayim. In Mitzrayim, there were a lot of people that had various, uh, shall I say, various obstacles. And when they came to Mitzrayim, a lot had to be encouraged. A lot had to, when it came to Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, a lot had to be encouraged because they weren't feeling so encouraged about certain things. And there it was that we were supposed to borrow Isha Reu, borrow the Kalim and get certain uh, goods and riches to leave with. The fact that a person may not be uh, with children at the Seder is addressed by the Rambam. The Rambam says, everyone knows who asked the Manashtano. Oh, they'll tell you, the child, the, uh, this is the time, the kids. The Rambam said, 
Not every Seder is there going to be a child. I want you to know right now, there's not a child at every Seder. The Rambam said, but ask the questions, ask to each other. One should always feel that they have made an impact in this world, that they have left an impression in this world. Always, those that are not yet blessed with children or that do not have children, they're on a high level. My great Rebbe, Reb Simcha Wasserman, Zecher Tzadik Lebracha, the son of the great Rebbe Hanan Wasserman, was never benched with children. He and his Rebbetzin, they did their avoda. I never forget it. Reb Simcha told me one time, he says, Ulai, we never had children so that I could do my avoda and the Rebbetzin could do her avoda and we were able to do what we needed in this world. It is a very difficult thing for us to understand uh, the gift of childbirth. And that gift, when it is not, um, when the gift is not in a home, a person should know that their avoda is so precious, that their avoda is so great, it's uh, a completely, completely different level. Ain't a doima. It's not comparable. The person that has children to understand in any way the avoda of those that may not have children. There was a person in our shul. He's the candy man. He's misameach all the kids. Anybody knows if you go to shul and they have a candy man and he gives out all beautiful candies. It's interesting. Everyone in, has shul, in the shul has kids. He has no kids. Never one time did I ever hear him say, Rav, what do I do? Rav, I wasn't benched with children. It is a time that we share together with Hashem's children in the world. We can teach other children. We can have children at the Seder. We can have children in, in other ways. It's beautiful. The Talmud tells us a person could pay for to help to pay for tuition for Shad Limud and then that children become our own. Alabeni Matzdaloch, how the Tehillim talk about it. It's very deep. I would like to have the chance to speak with you if you would like, maybe by phone or in a different way. I would love to go a little bit deeper into the entire Indian. Uh, the Satma Rov said, a person that didn't have children, according to the mystical books, did have children. They did have children. And he explains, according to the Zohar, that a person gives birth to neshamos, and those neshamos are born out. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit deep uh, to talk about this evening, but there is uh, a whole world of thought and outlook on those that, uh, do not have children. Yerbu smachos be Israel. You should have tremendous simcha, tremendous hatzlacha, tremendous bracha. You should have ashpon klal Yisrael. And it's not dependent on that singular bracha of children or not children. I hope to be able to talk with you in person. Yeah, yeah, I took down your um, email address and your phone number was just shared with me. So, yes, I'll reach out. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Rabbi Goldwasser, my shalom bias gets affected at this time of year because we don't see eye to eye. And there's so much that needs to be done together. What can we do about this? It brings out a lot of shalom bias issues during this time of year. They say the therapists make a lot of money after the Yom Zayim. 
<laughs> uh, I tell you, just on who to invite and who not to invite, that in itself is a uh, is a matter that we need a lot of shalom bias. You're not having your parents. You are having your parents. You're not going to have that brother. I'm sorry. Anybody can come. I don't care. He doesn't have a place. Let him eat out on the street. So right. there he are. Called up then, but he can eat on the street. <laughs> there are a lot, a lot of concerns. Uh, everybody uh, sitting together. Uh, the way that I think to do it is to try husband and wife and to make a pact a strong pack together and say, no matter what is going to go on, no matter what happens, we are going to stay strong. We are not going to argue with each other. We have to be unified in order to get through this. I think that uh, the understanding that we have, that maybe you're right. There are a lot of things that could rock the marriage right now. Pesach could do it. It definitely could do it. But, we're going to stay strong for the mitzvah, and we are going to try with all that we have to be unified for that night and be a unified front and make sure that we're able to uh, get everything that we need for Pesach and have the evenings go off without a hitch. The only way to do it is to introduce a lot of simcha. If there's a lot of simcha, then... I don't care if I'm happy. I don't care if I'm happy and I'm so besimcha and you tell me, oh, you know, somebody just hit your car, you know, chas shalom outside. I say, oh, good, <laughs> mazel tov. Why? Because I'm happy. However, if I'm not happy, every little thing that she does, everything that he does, it begins to bother me. We have to try to go in besimcha by yourself, buy a new suit. Get ready, uh, Indian, to buy your wife a new uh, whatever outfit, a new piece of jewelry, anything, anything will do. Or a new tchotchke, it doesn't have to be a big deal. But enter in the simcha. It says, borrow kalim. Crazy. Borrow kalim, it says in Shulchan Aruch. You don't have a, you know, a Lennox dish nor a taki, get a good one. Even you have to borrow it, put it in by the Seder. It'll make you besimcha. You'll look at it, right? Why? Because there has to be simcha present. When there's simcha, I love you. When there's simcha, I bring out the love. Al kop shayim techasa ba'ava. We say yom naroyim. That on all the anger, I'm sorry, all the transgressions, Hashem covers it up with great love. And somebody, I don't know who says the following parish, no matter what your spouse does, as long as you love that person and you bring out that great love, it don't matter. He came late to the Seder. Uh, she didn't have the food ready on time. I don't know what was going on in that kitchen. You know, we waited for it and it wasn't ready. Or uh, the time the, the lights went out and we looked for somebody at Shabbos going, you know, and Lakewood, they have a professional you can get in that. They they drive past the house. The, we couldn't get it, so we had to say her in the dark. Who cares? Who cares? We are here for each other. Our love for each other is what's going to make us strong and what's going to make the family strong. The same love that you felt under the chuppah, that same dream that you had, the aspirations for the future, that's what you have to fill the night of the Seder. We are one. We're married 30 years. We're married 50 years. We're married how many years? But on that night, you have to be like newlyweds. You have to see that Ava, the first Seder that you sat together, the first time you wore the kittel, the first time you used the new Becher, the first time that you're husband and wife. That has to come out. We say in Lechadodi, like a, a, a groom rejoices with his wife. It doesn't say like an old married couple rejoices. It says like Sheva Brachos. You come dancing in, you're singing. If you're like that, then you can reduce some of the stress. We are here for each other. That's the way that the feeling has to be. 
it has to be prevailing on the night of Rabbi, Seder. Rabbi, Rabbi Goldasek, did you like break up the agenda like more what men need to focus on and what women need to focus on? Like just break it up more like, like that? Uh, for the night of the Seder or Pesach? Oh, in general, the, the next two weeks. The next two weeks, I would say that the uh, man has got to focus on making the Pesach experience unbelievable. He's got to make the Pesach experience for the whole house. It's got to be a positive one. It's got to be besimcha. He's got to learn. He's got to make the right uh, mood for the uh, for the seder. Uh, I'm I, at a seder. Ben Sion is unbelievable. It comes time for the frogs, so he has a frog outfit. He puts the frog outfit on. <laughs> Crazy. The kids love it. Dumb Tzvardeya, what's Tzvardeya? And they see the frogs walking around. It comes to life. It's an unbelievable thing. Or some people have the little puppets that they put on. Comes to Kriyas Yamsuf. You walk on the table. You walk around the table. You it reenact the original walking through the sea. Whatever it is, that makes it real. You make sure that you have treats. Some people throw out candies or have little toys that they buy. For the Seder, it makes it beautiful. You present to your wife a beautiful Haggadah, something that she will appreciate, or another, whatever she likes, you present something, you leave it by her, by her table. I remember there was one wife, and she had to add the smallest possible shear. So the guy said, what do I do? I have a little cup that I bought, a plastic cup, and it seems to be the minimal share I could give. I said, but she needs chizuk. She said, he told me he needs chizuk. I said, you know what? Go to the store. I'll give you a suggestion. Buy her a little silver cup or pewter cup. It doesn't matter. As long as she knows you bought that specially for her. And you have that when she comes out to the Seder sitting in her plate. You know what it will mean? That you thought about her, that you brought something. The husband has got to gear it up. He's got to learn the halachos. He's got to know everything. He's got to be ready with the nigunim. He's got to be lebedic. Get some sleep the night before. Don't stay up the whole night. That has got to be a night where the kids will remember. And the Abba, the Tati, the dad was in a great mood. And there was a great Seder. For the uh, woman of the house... Her focus has to be, I'm going to maintain my level of simcha. I'm going to make sure that everything that I can do to make the Seder uh, successful, I'm going to do it. I'm going to galvanize all of the children. I'm going to galvanize myself. If Even if it's a husband and wife by themselves, I'm going to galvanize each other. I'll make sure that on the night, I have something nice to say. I'll make sure that there's something special that will come out of the kitchen. I'll make sure on that night that I try to say the proper tfilos. I'm going to say tell him that the Seder should be a great Seder. I'm going to add in that woman's touch to see that the Seder is beautiful, whether it's the napkin folded in a special way whether it is something that she has to say to add to the Seder. Bishus Nashim Sidkonius, it's all goes after the woman, all after the girls, what they did. Miriam went and she took the women and they had their own special avoda during the Shira. That's the women. They got the power. The girls have the power to add a tremendous piece to the Seder. That's what they have to focus on. And look at it in advance. Get some questions. Get some questions you want to ask, some questions you want to pose during the Seder. And bring in your own Divrei Torah. It is something, it's participatory. Everybody participates. Everyone has a chalik in the night of the Seder. Read part of the Haggadah. It's for her as well as for him. It's equal to every member of the family. Nobody has a monopoly on the night of the Seder. It is open to each member and every segment of our community.
Somebody texted me a question, but I want to like globalize a little bit. Somebody's saying she's an older single girl who feels that she's really not looking forward towards Yantiv, sitting around the Seder table, being an older single. She's she's even more down because she recently had a shidduch that didn't work out and she needs chizik. But let's globalize that question just in general for people that are single or divorced and alone for Pesach. What chizik when it comes to these yamtayvim where it's family oriented and you don't have your family because your kids are not with you or because you're not married? What chizik could you tell those type of people? It's a challenge. The brokenness that a person could feel lower lane a divorce, the best divorce, if there is such a thing, the brokenness that a person feels afterwards, always the questions that exist afterwards. To sit down in a Seder, maybe you have to go to somebody else's Seder, it's not geschmack. A single, a wonderful, beautiful young man, young woman, or a little older woman, little older man, the geschmack that she or he has to feel is getting, being able to make over the feelings of upset I've, I should be conducting my own Seder. I should be here. Here I'm here like, uh, you know, as just like a, a guest That's in the house. A nebuch. A nebuch. And uh, I want you to know, it is extremely difficult. What I do think is that try to be at a Seder where you will not feel uh, strange. Try to be at a Seder that is so welcoming, that you feel a part of it, that you can come in and that you can be like anybody in the house and for one night or two nights, not to think about the whole idea that you are single. Hashem says to everybody in this world, every Yid and Klai, so you have a part. Even though we are geared towards marriage and married couples, there is a huge single alum, and they are so wonderful, and they are so great, and they got a power to them. It's unreal. There was a group that had asked me, a group of singles, a while ago to give a shear, and I was zochet to give the shear to sing older, older singles. I cannot tell you the greatness that happened from that shear, the beauty, the power that happened from the people that are in this year. Every single is a great power. We don't know what has happened up until now. Rav Tzvi Kushalevsky has given the entire world a tremendous lesson in Amun and Bitochen. 84 years old. He's an Abba. 84 years old. Mind-boggling. He waited. How many clips came out? He's moving that carriage up and down in the Bochumer dancing, Zara Chayva Kayoma. It's unbelievable. There is hope for everybody. If the person wants to get married, I had a schus. Rabushi, I don't know if I, if I have a minute to say it. I'll say it over. Huh? I was in Brighton Beach. Brighton Beach, they do have Yidin, but... It's certainly not like Flatbush Borough Park or Queens or other places. I had to do a shlichus there. They sent me to for a mitzvah, dvar mitzvah. I'm walking back, no yidin. All of a sudden, there's a woman there. I want to say something. The lady that was on before who didn't have children is going to connect with this girl who signal, and they're going to daven for each other. And hopefully, they should both be zoichet for the Yeshua's. That's what happens on Coach Menachem's program. Ein gedolem isu, nothing bigger. Anyhow, the woman sees me and she says, she's an older single, older. She says, Rabbi Gowasu, what are you doing here? I said, well, uh, I had to do a shlichus here, uh, the bar mitzvah. Yeah, but, but why are you here? And I said, because I, 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 I was like trying to explain it to her. But I don't understand. But you're here in Brighton Beach. 
I said, is everything okay? She said, no. Somebody to me today said the worst thing that anybody could ever say to another person. I said, what happened? She told me, I'm afraid to say it out. I agreed with it was the worst thing. She said, you know, I am a Nebuch. And I am so angry at that person for what they say. I'm a Nebuch. Look at me. I got nowhere. I got no one. I went out all the years. Nothing ever happened. I said to her, you're not a Nebuch. You're a great woman. You do a lot of chesed. Chesed shalom. She was so upset. I said to her, I want you to do one thing. She said, what, Rav? I said, I want you to be Moichel, that person. Moichel? I should be Moichel. I said, please be Moichel, that person. It's not suited to you to be like that. She said, okay, I'm Moichel. I said, be Moichel, Belev Shalem. Forgive with a complete heart. She said, Moichel, Belev Shalem. I said, okay, now I have one more thing for you to do. I want you to give that person a bracha. Give him a blessing. She said, Rav, is that the din? Is that the law? I said, yes. For you, that's the din. She put her hands up. She said, I give him a bracha. I give a bracha that everything should be good. I give all the brachas. She began to cry. I walked away from her after I gave her a little bracha. I came back to Flatbush and I went to Landau's. It's a minion factory, a beautiful place, overflowing with minyanim. It was mincha time. I caught the last mincha. I opened up the sitter. Re'ena ve'onyeinu. By that which we say, Hashem, please look at our affliction. It's mesugal at that point. I looked up to Hashem and I said, Hashem, you got all the chasanim. You got all of the chasanim. This young woman, Magiala, she deserves it. She deserves it, what she went through. Hashem, could you give to her one of those chasanim? I cried. What am I, Tfilis? I left the show. I thought about her. I thought about that whole encounter. A few weeks later, I get a telephone. I was sitting in this room. It's that woman. She said, Rob, do you remember you saw me in Brighton Beach a few weeks ago? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. How you doing? I have a request from you. I said, yes. I would like to bring someone to meet you. I would like your bracha. Usually I say next week or wait two weeks. Her, I said, come tonight. She came, brought the guy that they've been going out. He walked through the door. Rabosha, I want to tell you, I almost fell over. <laughs> Midos, character, study guy. Stand there together. <laughs> Alamilas. I I I could I kept staring at this guy. I couldn't believe it. If a person holds on, doesn't matter what happens in the future, but hold on. Be strong. Be strong with Hashem. Say strong. Don't let anything in life even loneliness, even a, a comment from somebody. Oh, you're still around? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, didn't mean it. I have a shidduch, you know, it's, he's, he's on the North Pole right now, but he's going to come back probably one of these years. Don't get upset. Stay strong. Look for the chizuk in life. I'd be happy to talk with anybody that I could possibly help. Don't ever worry. We all go through nisyonos in life. I'm only mispalo that your nisyonos should pass. You should pass them with flying collars. No sat l'riecho neis lehinitz no says. Says until him, I gave to everybody a flag. 
Nes is also Lashon Nisayon. I gave you Nisayon to become a flag. You pass your Nisayon. You hold your banner high, no matter what happens, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you don't have, you keep holding that flag high. Hashem sees you're holding the flag. You should have every brach in life. Amen. Okay, let's go to the next live question. You're on. Hi. Um, I'm kind of speaking on behalf really of people who are unfortunately aren't able to attend a Seder for the reason that they're not uh, that they're not well. I have a friend right now at a, at a convalescent home in severe pain. Uh, one of my co-workers, in fact, that's why I'm working late to cover. She's on chemo right now. It's really, we're all really upset at work. I don't know how to, you know, how to give these people chizuk or to be cheerful for them or, you know, still any kind of Pesach spirit. I wish I could be there to even help them. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do for a Seder, but I don't, you know, I wouldn't know, how, you know, just, you know, how to approach them um, as far as feeling any Pesach spirit or, even doing any kind of celebration, um, you know. I mean, I know, you know, I know there are rabbis that go to convalescent homes and hospitals, yada yada. But you know, as a per on a personal level, I don't know how to keep them, you know, keep them, you know, make them be, you know, still some kind of simcha. You know, I, I don't know if you have that situation, you know. Uh, unfortunately, first of all, thank you for the question. Yeah. Your question is worth, what shall I tell you? Your yeah. question is worth yeah. thousands, thousands of dollars. Just the fact that you ask it and that you care so much. Yeah. For all of those who are in any way uh, incapacitated, immobile, those that are patients, we try to bring Pesach to them in any way that we can. If you could, bring them a Haggadah. If you need help, I'll buy a Haggadah. I'll, I'll send it to you for them. Give to them. If they're able to have matzah, give to them a taste of the matzah. Uh, if you could, you could, give to them wine. If they can't have wine, have a little grape juice. Mm -hmm. uh, sing to them. When you go, sing to them together one of the songs of yeah. the Dayenu, whatever song you know, or you can get a CD of it, or it's online, mm -hmm. uh, you can make a beautiful little Seder for them. Uh, talk to them. Leave to them a picture of a Seder table. Uh, give to them mm -hmm. something uh, to deal with Pesach. Maybe a Pesach treat. Maybe you baked something. I don't know, macaroons or mm -hmm. uh, some Pesach food. Give to them a little bit. Leave it with them. Let them have a taste of Pesach. Visit okay. them. It yeah. means a million. If they can't have the Pesach itself, a taste of Pesach will sometimes mean a world to them. In okay. some way, let them have the Pesach experience. It'll be huge. Thank you. Thank you. Rafa, that they should all have Rufus and... <laughs> The patients in the hospital should be able to leave and come home and be healthy and well. Oh, thank you. Yeah. One of them is, uh, I'm here in New York. One of them is in Los Angeles, where my hometown. So I mean, she appreciates my calling her and everything. So I don't know if I could, you know, make some kind of arrangements, you know, it's across new. country, but yeah. See yeah. if someone could go, maybe somebody you know could go yeah. and pay a visit. It would be beautiful. And even you go on the on the uh, phone, sing yeah. to her, tell her a little taste of yeah. Yeah. Tell That's her a little right. story, tell her something. It would be huge for her. Thank you. Okay, it's good to have. Okay. Yeah. And a lot, a lot of bracha to you and Amen. a very good Thank you. Me. Let's just try to catch a few different angles of uh, Pesach, different situations. Um, somebody wrote they have a few teenagers that are not interested. Michal and the say that they're just the struggling teenagers and they just not have zero interest. They do their own thing. How do I try to like get them involved without like at the same time, you know, 
pressuring them like in a negative way? How do I deal with a struggling teenager who's really not into the whole religion thing right now? I would ask the teenager to come. I would give them a schedule. I tell them we're going to begin the Haggadah at nine o'clock. We're going to be up to the part about the matzah at 10 o'clock. We're going to have the meal at 1030 or 1015. It would be the greatest schus just to have you at the Seder. It would be beautiful. Whatever part you would like to come to, it would be an honor to sit together with you. No pressure. Don't have to do anything. Just come. I want to break bread together with you, break matzah together with you. I would tell them that and show them that you really genuinely want them and they don't have to do anything. And when they come, I would have a special gift for them prepared so that they see that you thought about it beforehand. Uh, the stipler, the great stipler, the father of the great Goyen of Chaim Kanievsky. So the stipler was once interrupted in the middle of the Seder. There was a father that came in and said, they have a teenager and the teenager didn't show up for the Seder. And uh, they waited already uh, 45 minutes. What should they do? The, the stipler said, Lam teen, wait, wait for him. They came back an hour later. They said the stipler didn't show up. The stipler said, Lam teen, wait. It was getting already the problem that they thought it's going to get the chatzos and they didn't do the mitzvahs. The stipler said, wait a little bit more, a little bit more. All of a sudden, the young man came in, the teenager. He saw nobody had begun the Seder, the wine, the matzahs, everything was perfectly in place. His table setting was there. His chair was left for him. And he realized that they waited. He took his place at the Seder. After that Seder, he stayed till the end. Slowly but surely, he started to come back to Yiddishkeit. Who knows what would have happened if they would have done the whole Seder without him. When they will see how much we want them, every child, every son, Every daughter at risk, not at risk, alienated, not alienated, franchised, disenfranchised, it will be a whole different story. We should all reach out and show them we just want them there. We just want to be together with them. We just want to enjoy with them. They will know your feeling. They'll feel the love and they'll want to come. Okay, give all the Rabbi, Rabbi Goldas. There's so many more questions. We're going to go to closing. Can't get to everything. But I want to say that the um, Sfus of tonight's share that we have for putting it together and Menachem, uh, I don't know about you, but it should be a Sfus for the older single to find the Shidduch and for this woman to have a child this year, Mr. Shem. Sfus for all the hundreds of people that are here, Mr. Shem, the thousands of people that get that Sfus willing to give that to these people that they should have the Yeshua this year that they need. And the Mesh Hashem, we should all be Zoyfer. Everybody could see it's really crazy times. We have earthquakes. We have bridges collapsing. We have wars. It's Soif Yom of whatever you want to call it. It's definitely going to be the Pesach of the, you know, definitely we're getting closer and closer. It's getting crazier and crazier. So, Shkayak Rabbi Goldwasser for coming. And uh, I'm going to first read the closing over here and then we'll give it over to Menachem and then we'll leave it to Rabbi Goldwasser. So again, thank you for coming on, Rabbi Goldwasser, every Pesach, and giving the audience a tremendous chizik. Really appreciate your time. And um, again, if anybody wants to, um, I'm being mechazik, everybody. Again, tonight's share is 181. If anybody wants to join the WhatsApp, please WhatsApp me at 732-314-1710. I'll send you a link to join the community chats. At Menachem, you can go to his website, www.menachemberful.com. Sign up for the emails of the shiurim, the replays, and everything. Again, Mitzchem next Sunday night, nine thirty. Bez Hashem, we're gonna have a, a share on Erev Pesach. Maybe we'll do a little bit more of the actual seder itself. Um, we're gonna have a guest speaker. 
please join us and it should be deep and meaningful. Hopefully we can go straight into Pesach with that. If anybody has any questions to Coach Menachem, please email coachmenachem at gmail.com. Everything is recorded. Make sure we'll be on menachem.com, on YouTube, on all the podcasts, Spotify 24-6, and I don't know, there's like another million of them. Um, tonight, if you want to listen to the tonight's share on the phone, you can listen to it tonight, tomorrow at 732-305-9011. If anybody wants to be in touch with Rabbi Goldwasser, please email him at the Rav, T-H-E, Rav, R-A-V, 02 at gmail.com, the Rav, 02 at gmail.com. Thank you to all the advertising sponsors for promoting us, the Liquid Scoop, LA and Ariel, Five Town Central, and Rabbi Goldwasser, like we spoke about before. Every year that we do, it gets more halig and halig. It keeps on getting better and better. So, Mr. Shem, the next year when with you and Mashiach together, we'll do it together. Mask him? Mask him 100%. Mask 100%. So, again, as somebody asked again, the Rav's email is the Rav 2 T H E R A V 2 at gmail.com. I'm going to go to Coach Menachem and then Rabbi Goldwasser will pass it over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rabbi Goldwasser. Baruch Hashem. We've covered a lot, and uh, there was a lot of chizik, Baruch Hashem. And like we heard, you know, not always is easy. When you tell that lady she should be moichel, it's not always easy, but, you know, you go, and the challenges that everybody has, everybody, you know, a little bit, all those challenges that we have to get to the, to get to the Seder. Um, I believe, you know, it's important to try to make it as pleasurable, like we heard, to try to see what works for you, to make it a little bit easier. It's hard as is, you know, to see what you can do. And the, the Seder, you mentioned the Seder is, could be the best group therapy. And for some, it, it ha brings up a lot of triggers. So good, listen, everybody has to know where they are. For some, it's Geshmak, they sit around and they love it. Others have those triggers that come up. And that's their avoider. And if they can prepare for beforehand to see, to get ready for it, so it's not, uh, you know, it doesn't hit them for the first time. And Hashem should help us all. We should be zeichet to tap in, even with all the challenges, even with the if it's hard, Hashem gives koyach. We should find the koyach, find the positivity to be able to go into the yom tov and it's Hashem with the right foot. So our goal was, sir. The hundreds of people here mentioned in the thousands that will listen to it. What can you leave us with some divrei chizik and a bracha before we go into the Helig Yantiv of Pesach? I say that right now, uh, before Yom Tov and Coach Menachem Rabosha, you 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 did them. Uh, that's all I can say. You did them of mine. You you did them of Klal Yisrael to bring everybody together like this week after week, and to present such unbelievable topics and inyonim and not be afraid of any topic, you bringing everybody together, the whole idea of the Seder, Kulona Mesubin, we're all together, we're all unified. Kla Yisrael, the greatest single bracha that we could get is unity. Unity, that we're all together, that we're all one. And I believe that that's the avod of the Seder, and especially this year, uh, we're waiting for big brachas to happen. We're waiting for the hostages to come back. We all hope that they will be back before the Seder, but each one of us is going to do our avoda, and we're gonna remember that we've got to leave a chair at the table for the hostages. A crazy thing happened, Lel Shabbos. I woke up in the middle of the night. I had a dream that they found the hostage. Immediately, as per the instructions of Lakutim Maran, I said the Pasuk should come true. But so Shabbos, I was shocked to learn that they did find the hostage. Not living, but at least they were able to bring him to Kavri Yisrael. I told one person about it, and he says, Rebbe, why don't you have a dream that they found all the hostages? I'm asking Hashem, we should all dream and it should come true that all the hostages come back safe and sound. 
should be big brachos for Klal Yisrael. The Seder should be a source of chizuk for everybody. I wish everyone all the brachos and refuos and yeshuas and simchas and parnasa and zibugim and children. Everybody should have everything that they need. We should be one unified klal. Orchenu avinu kulonu keachod. Hashem bless us. We will be as one. Thank you very much to everybody. Achag kosher v'somech aziz and Pesach. Amen. Have a wonderful week. Hopefully, we'll see you next Sunday night. Same time, same place. Shkoyach Rabbi Goldwasser. Shkoyach Chosh Menachem. And have a good night, everybody. Good night.